Hey guys, Montel here, and thanks so much for tuning into this edition of Free Thinking with Montel. Look, according to the Department of Defense, approximately 200,000 service members transmission, transition from the military service to civilian life every single year. Some veterans may experience difficulty finding civilian employment after leaving the service, even though an overwhelming 94% of employees say that hiring a veteran worker is appealing to their organization. Some veterans may be unfamiliar with the effective job searches and job search strategies and may not know how their military experience and training could apply to jobs in the civilian workforce. Well, today is July 25th, and it is National Hire a Veteran Day. And here with me today is an Army veteran and a CEO of Recruit Military and a veteran who can attest to the value of their military job search services. Tim Best and Dave Jensen, welcome to Free Thinker with Montel, sir. Hi, Montel. Absolutely. Thank you. Hi, guys. How are you doing? No, thanks for being here. All right, why, don't, why don't we just start this? I guess I'll, I'll start uh, with you, Tim. Why don't you tell me? Uh, you know, tell me about your military career, when it started, and what the transition was like for you when you transitioned out into civilian world. Sure thing. Thanks, Montel. Well, I started my professional career in the Army as a helicopter pilot, and I was fortunate enough to serve as a special operations attack little bird pilot and night stalker at B Company, first of the one sixtieth SOAR. And there, I got to work for. And alongside some of the most incredible teammates, mentors, and leaders I think anyone could ask for. I also got to do, I think, probably one of the coolest jobs anyone could ask to do during that time. But like everybody else, there came a point where it was time for our transition. I say ours, mine and my family's transition. And just like I think most people experience, there was excitement there about that, but there also was a lot of trepidation. You know, how was I going to take what I had learned and developed in the military, what I had kind of proven to myself I was good at and segue that into a career that would be fruitful, meaningful, and fulfilling. And I was fortunate enough to make that transition into our company. At the time, we were called Bradley Morris. Through, through mergers and acquisitions, we've consolidated to a brand of recruit military. But for the past two decades, I've been able to wake up every morning and go to work with a team of people who are passionate about helping other transitioning service members and their families make that transition in an effective way and in a way that brings that kind of satisfaction and fulfillment. And I think, you know, my, my, my family, my wife and I, we've raised three kids in Chesapeake, Virginia since then. Our, our oldest is actually serving as an army captain in the Green Beret pipeline, sweating it out down in Ranger School right now. But I think we'd summarize our story, Montel, as a really blessed veteran journey. You know, one where when the military background and experience was leveraged correctly and through the support of the right people and organizations. And so we feel really fortunate to have had this path that we've been on. You know, I do a show that uh, airs a lifetime when it's called Military Makeover, which we take deserving veterans. And we literally take their homes and make, make them over from the ground up. But then I also do another show that's called Military Makeover. Operation Career, where we feature businesses that hire veterans, and the number of businesses that are, are are reaching out to be you know highlighted on our program is incredible. I mean, because they they understand the unique skill set that veterans have. Dave, why don't you tell me tell me about your military career and your transition? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, joined the United States Army back in 2009. I uh, just kind of knew I wanted to do something different. Started off in community college and had no direction, really not really sure where I wanted to go. Uh, so I joined the Army and uh, joined the infantry. So I was in for about six years, uh, deployed out of Germany, um, got back down to Texas, down at Fort Hood, and I got voluntold to be a recruiter. Uh, was not happy about it. Was not excited, especially being infantry and combat arms. I never thought of being the army and sit behind a desk. Um, it brought me up to New York City and turned out that I was pretty good at it. Um, yeah. And I lo loved recruiting. And it was really neat to bring kids in, you know, have them kind of follow my direction and what I did in the military and then have them shoot me a message later and say, hey, thanks. You know, this is a really cool, cool path. And, you know, my life turned out completely different. Um, so I got in um, and got to about my 10 year mark in the army and decided to get out. I was still young and I was like, I, I'll go ahead and move on and you know start a different job. 
and um, had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew I was a recruiter at that point, but really thought I was going to go on and do police force. Uh, I interviewed with the Secret Service and uh, just really couldn't put a finger down on what I wanted to do. So I attended quite a few recruit military career fairs um, throughout my transition and was looking for a job and was introduced to um, a lady named Wendy who works with Spectrum. And she told me, hey, look, we're, we're kind of sourcing for a recruiter who's going to recruit specifically for veterans as they get out of the military. I thought, that's perfect. Absolutely. Um, wasn't a role they were recruiting for at the time, but they were kind of sourcing for it. And so as my transition got out, I got a job with NASCAR, kind of worked on their social media team. Towards the end of the season, I got a call from Wendy again. She said, hey, look, we're ready to hire. Um, would love for you to come in for an interview. I would love for you to be our military liaison. So I go in for the interview and uh, they ended up going with somebody else and hired somebody else. I was devastated. I couldn't believe it as much as they kind of played around with me about the position. Um, so I moved on and really focused on my photography a little bit. And about six months later, Spectrum calls me back again. And they said, hey, look, we're, we're looking to hire another military liaison. We'd love to bring you in. And my first thought was, well, you know, you kind of hired or interviewed me the first time and didn't give me the job. Turns out the person that they initially hired turns out to be my future boss. And uh, so now I work for him. And the thing that really resonated with them was when they turned me down for the position, uh, they loved how I followed up. I asked for advice. Um, they critiqued me. I used that um, and ended up moving on and worked for Spectrum as a military liaison. Little did I know I'd be back at Recruit Military um, at their career fairs hiring veterans. So, um, kind of well, I mean, Tim, let's talk a little bit about this because there's a lot of veterans out there right now that think that, oh, I got to get a job working some way, shape, or form tangentially with the military. And that's not necessarily true. We can take your skills that you've learned in the military and apply them to thousands of different uh, verticals, correct? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, especially when, like I said, being in the infantry, I thought I was destined to be a police officer. Just kind of being in the infantry, that's the next step in line is what all my veteran buddies did. And uh, little did I know that recruiting was going to bring to a whole mm -hmm. new skill set that I never even knew I had. So, well, now you went to work for recruit military, recruiting military. But I'm saying again, Tim, not all jobs have to deal with the military. Correct. That's right. That, that, that's right, Montel. And it's something one of our differentiators we talk about is translation. And, you know, another way of saying that is transferable skills. And it's something that we believe is really important in this process for both audiences, the job seekers and the employers, because a lot of times it takes a conversation to bring those two audiences together to connect and to realize that just like David uh, came out of the service with, he wasn't just an infantryman. He wasn't someone that just could do security or law enforcement. He had all kinds of other skills, hard and soft. And when you when you help teach employers how to walk through a transferable skills conversation, which is something we do a lot of here, it helps them understand that and how to be able to peel out those experiences from that service member who may not be as equipped to do that themselves. And when that conversation happens, it is amazing the different career fields that service members transition into, no matter what their MOS was. And that's some of the resources that you provide at Recruit Military, correct? Absolutely. Sure is. You'll teach the veteran how to take a look at their career and extrapolate that out. To maybe they don't understand that there's, you know, something that uh, they did in the military. I mean, you know, uh, um, uh, the, the fact that we are overly disciplined, we're more disciplined, we're more team oriented, we are more goal oriented. There are so many aspects of, of a military service member's professional development that a lot of civilians don't get. That's right. And, and Montel, you, you, you nailed it too. Many of the service members need help understanding how to convey that. And that's something, no other, one of our, one of our products that we have is our job board and database where job seekers and employers can engage digitally, right? Well, no other job board in the world has something we have, and we believe it's necessary in our niche. And it's something we just launched a year ago. And it's a candidate success program. Literally every registrant in our in our job board now receives communication and an offer of a phone call with one of our experts to walk them through that conversation to make sure that their digital profile is not just their contact information and their MOS and a few other job search criteria, which lead to the problems David was talking about. Instead, we dive into a robust conversation about their skills, their interest, 
their experience. And we're able to populate that digital profile with details that allow employers to better harvest those profiles for meaningful roles. And you know, one of the things we're trying to attack there too is this underemployment issue. We believe the better we are at helping a, a service member or their family, because we help their family members too, really convey their skills and their interest, the more likely we are to have them accept the right kind of role when they step out. Absolutely. And for, I mean, this is, this is I know probably tuning in, listening today, there are several, a, a large number of vets who are out there thinking, well, you know, I was, uh, you know, communication electronics in the military. How does that transfer into civilian life? I mean, you know, I was working on uh, making sure that we kept lines of communication open with the front line and the fob, but I mean, how does that work? <laughs> and how can I actually translate that into something that, would be meaningful for a civilian office. And um, you would be able to take that, extrapolate that out and make them understand that that role was not just one job holding a radio. It was a job that was multifaceted. That's right. It, it demonstrates their ability to learn, their ability to react under pressure, their ability to adapt, their ability to lead, their ability to follow, to work well with other people. I mean, there's so many things that come out of that veteran experience. And Sure, there's hard skills and hard education that do sometimes translate very directly. But even in that case, that doesn't mean that's what that service member wants to continue doing. You know, I didn't want to be a pilot when I was getting out. Right. So it's it's a very important part of what we do. And, you, you know, like I said, I think the thing that we really try to, to, to convey as often as possible, it's not just an employer educational issue. It's not just a job seeker educational issue. Both audiences need to understand this. And the only way to do it, Montel, is to come together for conversations. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me a little bit more about some of the things, you know, like I, some of the pre the misconceptions that our veterans have, that maybe right now you could help allay some of these fears or guys who are watching. Talk about some of the misconceptions that they have about the way they are viewed by our civilian workforce. I mean, you know, I know I've talked to a lot of veterans and, and they say, well, you know, I seem to be always lumped in with the group of guys who have PTSD. Well, let's tell the truth. I mean, you know, Though we do have some service members that are struggling, but that represents probably less than 11% of the entire force. There's 89% of them that are doing great. They got out, they had a great experience, and they're now ready to move on to the next part of their life. Talk a little bit about some of the misconceptions that our service men have and women have, and then let's talk about some of the misconceptions that some of the civilian businesses have. Let's start with sure the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, on the service member side, Montel, you hit on it. One is that they're concerned that they'll be stereotyped as, um, you know, a, a veteran with a certain condition or, or a certain <laughs> status. And that's something that, you know, what we, we really walk them through is this is this is why it's important to, to convey your skills and background experiences a certain way. But also know that employers have become educated on these situations and are also looking to evaluate the individual, especially when they're brought in and their hands are being held by people like us who know what we're doing. You know, another another big misconception that I, I will hear from veteran job seekers is that, well, companies don't really care about the veteran experience. They just are kind of waving the flag. And Montel, we've really found that to be untrue. And, you know, you 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 quoted some stats in the beginning of the show that point to the fact that this is a business case for most businesses. They see the value in that experience. They understand that. You know, David, when he was transitioning in his mid 20s, had experienced things that there's just no way that his civilian counterparts could have experienced. And it gave him a chance to demonstrate certain skills and abilities and attributes that were tested and proven. You know, so that's a common. And then the last one I'd say, Montel, is that there, there's there you definitely will hear commonly that there's this sense that they want to put me in a box based on what my MOS was, you know, as we mentioned earlier. That, uh, you know, I was an infantryman. All I can do is carry a weapon. I was a pilot. All I can do is fly. And again, we really believe in being kind of truth tellers with our job seekers. Our message to them is that's up to you. You're the one that gets a chance to put together your resume, your profile, your pitch about yourself, your networking opportunities. And, you know, garbage in is garbage out. And so, you know, we really try to educate them on those those three areas. Well, you know, I mean, uh, and you hit on one thing, and that is, and I, and I'm, I don't say this in any way, shape, or form to disparage the general population, but we're living in a time right now where 
you know, we got more people walking away from their employment <clears throat> than we've seen in the, this. It's like the great quit <laughs> generation. I don't get it. I don't understand it. And then, you know, and I'm not knocking people who want to make a decision about, you know, where they are and transition in their own lives. But it seems to me that those who have had a successful, honorable career in our military and have been discharged honorably um, understand certain things about life that maybe their civilian counterparts don't understand. It's true. It's very true. We see it, you know, the with, with the, the general veteran workforce, you know, to refer to it that way. It's been proven in some statistics that they generally have a better retention rate than their civilian counterparts. And I think a lot of that has to do with what you just said is they have some experience coming into their civilian work life. And I think that that the way that that moves them forward is with a little bit of a sense of what I need to do as a veteran job seeker to kind of create my own path and my own journey. And that's not to say that there's not some underemployment issues still out there with the veteran population. Yes. But I think that's more about them landing the right opportunity and, and knowing what is the right opportunity than it is about anything else. And Dave, since you went through this protocol, this program yourself, why don't you just allay some of the fears to your fellow vets out there that are thinking, oh, yeah, well, this is just one guy. And it is not all of us. Well, the truth of the matter is it could be you, right? No, yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, like when I was getting out, I had no idea what I wanted to do. And on top of that, I had no idea how to translate my resume. You know, when I'm out there and I'm looking for an opportunity, I can say that I carried a rifle and sure, I, I brought the kid down to MEPS and helped him join the Army, but I had no idea how to translate that resume to, you know, show, hey, I actually am really skillful in this, 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 and this area. Um, and so that was one thing that Recruit Military really did actually help me with was they sat me down and we looked at the resume. Um, and speaking to other organizations that were out there, there's a lot of military recruiters that were vets themselves. And they said, hey, you know, they would critique my resume and help me fix that, um, which made me more marketable as a veteran, for sure. Um, and that's actually coming as somebody who didn't have a degree as well. I think a lot of these organizations, when you apply online, they turn you down right off the bat because maybe you didn't check that bachelor's degree or associate's degree box. Um, unfortunately for me, I did use that GI bill, but, um, you know, showing that my skill set could really translate was very beneficial. And Tim, I mean, let, let's go back now. First, let's uh, talk about some of the misconceptions that our veterans have. Talk about some of the misconceptions that, you know, the civilian workforce has. I mean, there are some employers that have some misconceptions about the abilities of, you know, uh, of our veterans. Talk a little bit about that. And how can we lay some of their fears? Sure thing. And I'll start with one that we see as probably the most disruptive to effective veteran hiring. And that's that to plug into the transitioning military workforce, which you mentioned is about 200,000 people a year, plus their spouses, you know, which is a really incredibly qualified group of employees too, who have been following their military service member around the globe. And they think that they can recruit them the same way that they recruit college grads and other normal recruiting efforts. And we'll find them referring veterans when they tap into that population saying, hey, go apply online and expecting somehow for that digital application to match up perfectly with their job descriptions that are written in their own industry hieroglyphics. And so we really, the, the, the customers, the clients we work with, this is something that we really try to work with them on and educate them on the importance of having a more dedicated, personalized and humanized approach to talking to the veterans. And, and going through that transferable skills conversation. So that's one. The, the other Montel that we see commonly still is this idea that they, uh, you mentioned it earlier, David brought it up, that there's education is only what's received at a university or a community college. And helping them understand that you have young men and women coming out of the military who have been through thousands of hours of technical vocational training. It may not add up to a degree, but it's incredible experience. And so we try to help them understand how to dig into those conversations and attach that value to some of their openings. Absolutely. And I would think that, you know, uh, the, the from a, a civilian employer standpoint, um, some of them would really appreciate the opportunity. So do you work with them first or you work with them as one business and you work with the veteran has another one, you know what I mean? Like, like you have, you're broken into different departments. So one department is just working with the civilian workforce to help them understand 
how to change the way they approach the idea of even hiring a veteran. We we do, Montel. We actually we actually even break that up into one more leg of the stool. We we have one side that really works to ed, go out and do initial education and develop those relationships with the clients. We have our job seeker side that's constantly working with the job seekers on that piece. But in the middle of that is our our, our what we call our client success areas where they really focus on bringing those two audiences together in a way to have meaningful connections. And, mm -hmm. you know, even then we feel like we need more, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, it, it's a never ending need for education on both sides to create effectiveness. And, you know, I, now Dave, I, I want to know with you, you said you were transitioning while transitioning, you were trying to pursue your photography career. Are you able to work in that now alongside with what you're doing? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so photography was something that I didn't really do in the military. Uh, you know, I take a picture on my iPhone and that was about it. And uh, I bought a puppy and said, you know what, let's, let's buy a camera and start taking pictures of the dog. And uh, that kind of developed in my own little business, turned into a, a major passion and, and a hobby of mine that now I, I work. What seems like a full time job is more of a, a part time nights and weekends type deal. Uh, which is how I actually got reconnected with with Tim after I, I left my position with Spectrum. Uh, I was at a NASCAR race covering NASCAR, and uh, Ryan Vargas was a was a major sponsor for or, or drove for the Recruit Military car, and uh, so I took pictures. And I knew how much I had done with the Recruit Military in the back, so I connected with Tim on LinkedIn and got us back here together and uh, working together again. So and now you've expanded that, and you're doing photo photography for other companies. Yeah, I do uh, corporate style photography. We know, you know, it's anywhere from headshots and brochures to car washes. But uh, I focus mainly on sports and concerts is where majority of my photography is. Gotcha. And now, Tim, I mean, I, we you had mentioned it just a little bit. Retention, and I mentioned it also. Retention is a big problem right now in our nation when it comes to holding on employees. Talk about the difference in our vets because our vets seem to once they they get recruited and start working for a company, they are pretty loyal, are they not? They are, Montel. And I, I wrote an article about this in our, our publication called Search and Employ uh, last year. And it was basically about the idea that there, there's another benefit to having a veteran recruiting program is when you bring veterans into your organization in an organized way, they can impact your culture in ways you couldn't have imagined. When you think about the esprit de corps and the things we learn in the military, a lot of companies need, could really use that infusion of energy and positivity and enthusiasm. And it comes in in a way that helps with retention. And, and the other overall. thing, overall, and then the thing that I see that helps, I, well, let me say this. One of the reasons I believe that veterans do have a better retention rate than their civilian counterparts is also because they come in and perform. They come in and perform, and so a path opens up for them, and they're able to continue to be green and growing in those organizations. I had a, I have a, a friend tell me, or I shouldn't say tell me, he's always compelling me. He's, he said, Tim, recruit military should do a case study on your org chart. You know, you look at our org chart, and you know we're a good sized company, and virtually every every level in our organization is being led by someone who came from the military without any experience in that area, technology. We have marketing experts, sales experts, recruiting experts, you know, and it's just an incredible thing to see on our own org chart. That's really great. And I mean, now, I mean, how many, how many recruit, I mean, how many veterans do, this, do, do you work with on a regular basis? Well, it depends what service we're talking about, Montel. To, to sum it up, we've served over 2 million veterans and their families through our ecosystem. On, a, on an annual basis, we'll serve thousands of veterans through our recruiting service. We'll have about 50,000 registrants at our career fairs around the country, that many registering into our ecosystem each year. So, I mean, it's a really, it's a, it's a big, it's a big ecosystem that we operate in. And frankly, it's not enough. I mean, we, we, we want to help every transitioning service member and their family that we can. I want to hit them over the head one more time. So why should America's employers hire veterans? Listen, first, first and foremost, it's a business case. First and foremost, veterans bring skills and experiences that are going to make your team, your company, your organization better, period. 
Yeah, so. absolutely. Just to piggyback off that, you know, there's it's an untapped network that's out there and there are just unmatched skills that a veteran can bring, whether it's personality size, you know, so we talk about your hard skills and soft skills. There's so much that a veteran can bring that um, can change your non-veterans within your organization as well. Absolutely. And and let's talk a little bit about that just for a second. I mean, have you seen in your recruitment efforts that, you know, does 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 a bond start to exist between the non-veteran civilian employee and the civilian employee or the, and the veteran? I've seen that in, uh, in quite a few organizations that I've been in, um, especially with my, my last company. So many of the veterans that would bond with non-veterans because it's just a very unique story. Like most people will go to college, then they'll go into the corporate America or whatever industry they decide. And uh, that's the same story for every employee. But to talk to a veteran and hear that different path that they took to get in there, um, there's a lot of unique um, backgrounds. And that's what really bonds everybody is the uniqueness. Mm -hmm. Any final thoughts, Tim? Yeah, my final thought, Montel, would be, I think if if we were looking for perfection in this conversation around this topic, you know, at companies being perfect at attracting the right military community job seekers and military community job seekers being perfect at finding the right jobs, it would come down to conversations. It come down to putting the right work in to present each each audience's story and background correctly, and then to make sure that we have um, the right conversations happening to bring out those skills and conversations well again today is you know national hire a veteran day and i'm hoping that people you know they tune in and, and they they pay attention to the fact that you know our veterans do have a unique set of skills that can do nothing but enhance your business and so i'm hoping that we recognize and reach out and hire a vet today thank you so much gentlemen for being a part of free thinking with montel today um you know, we're going to keep us up and keep us going. And I will continue to, you know, promote the hiring of veterans as much as I possibly can. And thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you, Montel. Really, thank you. Thanks, David. Thank you. You guys have a great day. You too. Yeah. Hey, make sure you tune in to the next Free Thinking with Montel. Thanks for joining me on Free Thinking with Montel. Please make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell to be notified when new episodes post each week. We'd love to hear feedback, so please send us your comments. Thank you.